Hey, in this video, I will show you uh, how to use cylindrical coordinates to find volume of solid body uh, by these surfaces. Okay, so uh, first let's remind you about cylindrical coordinates, right? And, 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 and in which situation uh, we would use them. Uh, so first we have x, y, and z, that is rectangular, right? Rectangular coordinates. From here, if I put x equal to r cosine of theta, r sine of theta, and then, you know, z. So basically, we, we go from x, y, and z to r, theta, and z, right? And this is called cylindrical coordinate. Means you, you don't change z, right? So if you don't change z, z, you know, just the, 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 the picture should look like it's like cylinder. Because that is z-axis. Okay, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you know, those, these coordinates are extremely useful, you know, when uh, when you have some uh, solid, but that looks like cylinder, okay? And here, <clears throat> usually when we have such problem, we have to graph, you know, the picture. But in this case, it says our solid body by above, by this surface. So if above by this surface, I mean you have something like this, right? And this is surface, the first one, that is this guy. And below by this guy means, you know, I might have the following guy, right? So if you consider in three-dimensional space, you will see some, some kind of solid, right? Uh, above by this, and then below by this. So you might have some kind of this, something like this. And that is our solid. Okay, all right, so uh, how to solve this problem? <clears throat> I I will move to, uh, interesting, where is the, the marker? Uh, <clears throat> I will move to, uh, I, I don't use, you know, x, y, and z, I will use r, theta, and z. So <clears throat> I have to see what happened, right? First, I need to find the intersection between two surfaces. So I put z equal to z. It means 18 minus x squared minus y squared equal to x squared plus y squared. So I have 18 minus x squared minus y squared equal to x squared plus y squared. Uh, and then from here I get x squared plus y squared equal to 9, right? So you print this part into another side, you get 2x squared plus y squared. You simplify by 2, you get 9. You know, sign. So the intersection is, you know, is some kind of circle, right? If you consider an X or Y plan. But basically that is some cylinder, okay? Some cylinder. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, if you do this, you know, uh, change in variable, X squared plus Y squared is R squared. So that is R squared equal to 9. Because this is just R squared. Right, so uh, since R is the radius of the circle, you know, here you have circle, and this is R, right, so R will just equal to 3. <clears throat> R is equal to 3. So since this is your region of integration, right, the region of integration is in X or Y plane, so that is the whole circle, okay, the whole circle. R is, is, is from 0 to 3. And at the same time, you have the, the angle phi. Phi would go from zero to two pi. Okay, so from here you have phi uh, theta go from zero and two pi. <clears throat> and now you can write, you know, you can write a double uh, integral or triple integral. Okay, let's do that. But before that, we have to see since here you have r from zero to three, uh, theta from zero to two pi. So how does z change, right? Z change from where? From this to this. You see that? If from this, so that is uh, parabolic, right? That is z equal to r squared plus y squared. But if we change already, right? We have this x squared plus y squared just equal to r squared. And then on the top, you know, because our solid body above, right, by this. So on the top, I have 18 minus r squared. So that means z will change from r squared to 18 minus r squared. Okay, now we have all information, right? Let's write the double or triple integral to find the volume of this solid. Uh, so let me erase this. 
I, I want to keep this, you know. I erase this. <coughs> Our integral, okay. Integral, if I write uh, the triple integral, triple integral. So in here I have dz, dr, and d theta. dz, dr, d theta. Uh, so theta from 0 to 2 pi, r from 0 to 3, and z from r squared to 18 minus r squared. Uh, but you, you know, don't forget about Jacobian. Don't forget about Jacobian. And Jac when you do change of rival, you have to multiply by the Jacobian in here. And uh, the Jacobian in this case is equal to r. Okay? So, <clears throat> You just integrate this, you know, dz, and here you don't have any z, so I just write uh, the inside integral is equal to, uh, this is equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi, and then, you know, from 0 to 3, and then you have r, and then 18 minus r square minus r square, uh, dr, and then d theta. So basically, uh, your function depends only r, right? So you can write just separate two integrals. You can write integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta, and then integral from 0 to 3. In here, I have 18 r minus r cubed, right? dr. So this is easy because you have just, you know, polynomial over there. The antiderivative of this guy is 9 r square, and then minus r to the 4 over 4, right? And then you evaluate from 0 to 3. And in this case, you have 2 pi. So, you know, just plug 3 into this, you get some number, and then you know, multiply with 2 pi, you get 81 pi. So that is the final answer of this problem. Okay? So uh, I think that will help you a little bit, right? <clears throat> Let me remind you, why do we need to use cylindrical in this case, right? Because when you, uh, our region of integration looks like, you know, cylinder, right? It was cylinder, so some kind of this. In three-dimensional, in three-dimensional space. So it's very useful sometimes, you know, to, 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 to change from uh, rectangular to cylindrical, okay?